Welcome to Grey Scout Minis, my name's Sean, and today I'm going to be talking to you about my first impressions of using the Elgu Mars 3. Now, on paper, this thing looks pretty damned good. It comes in at a really reasonable price of around about £300 or $300 or so, depending on where you're based. It gives a ton of different advantages compared to some of the older Elgu models in terms of it's got a larger build plate than something like the Mars Pro or the Mars Pro 2. It's got much better resolution per inch, so you're going to get better quality than something like the Elgu Saturn, which has a 4K screen as well. And it's got faster print time, so for all of that, it seems like a really, really solid deal when it comes to the Elgu lineup. Now, let's get on with my first impressions of this. I have been using it now for about two to three weeks, and I've actually had to have it exchanged once because, yeah, we'll get on to that. So first of all, why did I go with the Elgu 3 versus something like the Saturn? So if you have been watching the channel for a little while, you'll have seen that I did get an Elgu Saturn and I really, really didn't get on with that. I just had numerous issues with the Saturn and I just didn't really get on with it and I had a couple of faults on it as well. So I returned that and exchanged it for the Elgu Mars 3 and I figured it was a nice go-between. I primarily focus on printing miniatures for this channel and I want to get the absolute best quality I possibly can without spending an absolute fortune at this stage. So the LG3 seemed to fit that really nicely. So let's start off with what's to love about this and for the price point it's a very very reasonable machine. It prints off some fantastic quality prints. So the vast majority of you will probably already know the reasons why this has better quality than something like the Elgu Saturn but to put it in perspective yes they both have 4k screens but that 4k is spread over a smaller screen on the Elgu Mars 3 versus something like the Saturn which is spread across a larger screen and I've got to say it lives up to those promises. It prints off some fantastic results and the prints that I've got from this, they just look higher definition and you can just about make out some extra details. It's not night and day, it's not as though you're gonna look at these and go, yep, that was printed on the Elgu Mars 3 versus something like my old Mars Pro. But when you start to get into it and really look for it, you will see the difference there. One of the big places it really shines is when you start to print at a lower layer height, I think, am I getting that in the right way? But yeah. 0.02 layer height on these, it still prints off reasonably quickly and the layer detail is so much better. So on some flat surfaces that I've had on like these minor tours from Artisan Guild, you can start to see the layer lines on it. And especially if you work with contrast paints a lot like I do, you'll sometimes see those layer lines come through and especially once you get that paint on them. So it was really nice being able to start to cancel that out using the Elgu Mars 3. I tried it on my Mars Pro and I never got particularly great results and I know a lot of people out there have tinkered with settings and stuff to make it happen but on the Mars 3 it was surprisingly easy to pull off and the quality combined with that layer height just makes it absolutely shine. The other thing to love about this machine is it's fast. Like when I first put some prints onto it I thought I must have done something wrong in the settings because it was, it was giving me like under two hours to print off a whole host of different minis and it did it and they all looked fantastic with those settings. Even pointing at 0 0.02 layer height, it still takes the same amount of time as my Elgu Mars Pro. Now granted, that is an old machine, but it is so nice to see that improvement in terms of print speed. So if you are somebody out there who is impatient, like I can get sometimes, or you want to be able to print off a lot of models in one go, you can do that on this machine. And then combine it as well with the larger build plate. It's one of my favorite things about this. The Saturn was huge and I did really, really like the build plate, but it was probably too big for my use case. If you are a miniature printer, that Saturn just has so much cleanup process afterwards because obviously it's a big, massive build plate. If you're printing off things like terrain, then yeah, it makes so much sense for that. But the Elgu Mars 3 is still large enough to print off some good amount of terrain, big beasties, but also do miniatures without it feeling like an absolute overkill waste of time and space. In terms of other things to like about it when it comes to build quality, the USB is on the front, so there's no kind of having to reach around or plug it into the side. And the power button is also on the front. So a little push power button that you kind of press and it, it's there. So yeah, again, unlike my Elgu Mars Pro, you don't have to kind of get around the back of it to do that. So all good things there, but there's a lot to dislike about that. And I'd be wrong not to cover off these things. So the first one is it does come in at a pretty reasonable budget, especially when you compare it to some other 4K screens out there. And you can tell that Elgu have managed to pull this off by cutting back on the actual quality of the machine. So any other Elgu product I've used in the past has always felt quite like a tank like you could take it and hit someone over the back of the head with it and the person would just they you know they'd stop existing i feel like if i took the elgu mars 3 and hit someone over the head with it my elgu mars 3 would stop existing and the person would turn around and just 
you know, push me down. That's a terrible analogy, but basically the quality is vastly reduced on the Elgoo Mars 3 compared to other products. It feels lightweight and top heavy, and that is not something you want with a resin printer because if you accidentally knock it, there is a chance you're gonna send it kind of tipping over. And also as well, it slides across my desk a lot because it has these awful little plastic feet which aren't adjustable in terms of like height or anything, so that makes it a bit of a pain. You'll probably want to get something rubber to stick on the bottom of it just to give it some traction so it doesn't slide off your desk. Perhaps a bigger problem when it comes to the quality, because you can just about get over the fact that it's a bit plasticky and lightweight, but one of the bigger problems I've found on both models, so I've had two Elgo Master 3s now, is the build plate doesn't feel quite secure. So when you do your twisty bit and clamp it onto the, uh, the neck or the bit that goes up and down, it wobbles quite a lot, and on any other Elgu product I've used, they feel incredibly solid. On this, it doesn't. It hasn't affected any of my prints, so I haven't seen any sort of distortion or anything like that, but I do wonder if that's gonna get worse over time, so something to consider. So you can tell that where Elgu have achieved this price point is by cutting back on some of the quality of the machine. Now, the issue that I had and the reason why I had to exchange it and the reason why I will cover it in this video because other people seem to have had it as well. It seems to be quite a common issue. Now, mine, I homed it, I leveled it, I did all of that jazz and for the first couple of prints, it was perfectly fine. Then what I found was at least 50% of the time, it would fail to find homes. So the build plate would get lowered and then obviously it would hit the screen and then it would want to keep going. It just basically wanted to you know, go all the way through the ground and you do this awful grinding sound. And then a couple of seconds afterwards, it would then kick in and be like, oh, you know, I've detected this is wrong. Um, oh, here's home. I did so much to try and fix it. So I went through all the settings. I updated all the firmware, all the latest drivers and all of that jazz and nothing that I did would ever fix it. And like I said, it wasn't as though it was wrong all the time. It was about 50% of the time. It would just fail to detect and then it would just kind of hit the plate. And obviously the issue with that is one day it's gonna go through the FEP and the VAT and the screen and there's gonna be resin all over the place and I don't wanna be taking my chances with that. I looked around online and loads of people seem to be having the issue. And they've gone through all sorts of troubleshooting methods with Elgu and tried new sensors, obviously tried the firmware updates and all of that, and it didn't make a difference. Apparently the only thing that would fix it was a new main board, so I assume there's a bad batch that's gone out. So just be cautious of that. So for me, I shipped mine off, sent it back, got a new one replaced, and I've had it for about a week now as I'm filming my first impressions. And it's one of the reasons why this isn't a review video yet. I wanna have more time with the new unit, but so far it has been absolutely perfect. I've had no issues with it failing to remember what home is and going through the screen. So, so far, so good. So based on my first impressions, would I recommend this for all of you people out there who are looking to print off some awesome 3D miniature sculpts. I would say yes. So far, despite the issues and the lower quality, this thing prints off some incredible, incredible little miniatures and you don't have to break the bank in order to achieve that. I will be doing a full review video in about a month's time or so, but like I said, I wanna have some real hands-on time with this, with it not being faulty, to see if it comes up with the same issues again, if it's something that crops up, and just to make sure I can kind of test out all the different bits of it. So let me know if you have any questions, anything you want me to experiment with, do my best to bring that to the review video. So I hope that's helped you. Like I said, it's just a first impressions. I wanted to give you an idea as to whether or not it's worth it. And like I said, I think it is at the moment, provided this second unit doesn't have the same issue. If it doesn't, then absolutely would recommend this machine. If it does have the same issue, then, well, I guess I'll just figure that out when I come to it. In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed that video. Hit the like and subscribe button and come along for some more 3D printing content. And I'll see you soon. Bye.